So the secret to getting better, more photorealistic render results is surface imperfection. What I mean by that is a model that has no surface imperfections looks ridiculous. You can see that this floor does not look like it could possibly exist. No one has walked on this floor, nothing has touched this floor. If we look at a real object, like this coffee cup, you can see all the places on the lid and the cardboard where it's been like touched and smoothed. You can see how the light doesn't perfectly bounce off of it. it there's some places that are a little bit more rough and same for this train you can see where all the wind and rain and dust has blown over the front of it and the sides making it so it's not a perfect matte color and it doesn't perfectly reflect anything so uh, we can get some of those results in CG very easily by messing with the specular settings and with the roughness settings and if we use an image texture to uh, kind of help those out that can get the best results. So we can see I have this original checker pattern and for the roughness and stuff, I have this really, really grunge metal texture and I'm gonna mix those together and I'm gonna plug those into the roughness and straight off the bat, the floor looks much better. The light isn't perfectly reflected. Everything looks way better. When we start up a new uh, material, you can see that everything here is perfectly like evened out. Uh, it's, uh, not super super reflective but it's not super super matte and if we turn down the specular you can see it's very matte and if we turn up the specular it's very uh shiny if we turn down the roughness very reflective if we turn up the roughness very matte and that's basically how it works so we can kind of control these by adding in some sort of extra image texture like this very very grungy piece of metal that i use in every one of my videos that i should probably stop using now because it's getting old and we can plug that into our specular and into the roughness. So off the bat, plugging it into the specular, you can see there's a little bit more uh, nuance, but it's not amazing. So I'm gonna add in a color ramp and I'm gonna use this to control the levels. If we turn the black up, that turns the specular down so we get more of that matte, matte, matte color. And uh, vice versa, if we turn the white up, uh, it turns the specular up so you get a way more shiny thing. So I'm going to kind of pinch these values in a little bit. I'm going to turn up the black and turn up the white. So now we kind of get best of both worlds. We have some places with more high contrast or specular and places with less. And now I'm going to rinse and repeat for the roughness by plugging this in here. And we can see that, holy cow, this is too reflective. So I'm going to plug in the color ramp again. And holy, holy cow, this is way too reflective. So that's because turning up the black means that the roughness goes down, which means it's more reflective and vice versa. So um, kind of sim deal here. I'm going to just kind of crunch the values a little bit until it starts looking less reflective than it does now because oh my god this looks bad so generally it's kind of finding a balance between the two uh, the specular and the roughness and i advise actually changing the color on these here because sometimes changing it from white to gray or from black to gray really helps even this out when it starts looking almost passable, um, I generally add in a uh, bump map. So you can do that by plugging the image texture into the normal. And then you add in a bump node here. And you're going to plug that into here and change this from normal to height. And this is way too bumpy. So um, you turn down the strength. And uh, I usually like to press invert. Uh, I don't know how much it changes. I think it just looks a little smoother when you do invert as opposed to non-invert. So after this point, it's basically just a tweaking game. You just got to change the settings all around just a little bit. And it's good to usually just take a big, long look at the object as a whole and see how the textures are doing. And in this case, I think that it's still uh, too reflective. So then you go back into your specular and you start working on that. And then you go back into your roughness and you start working on that. Again, like I said before, it really helps changing the color around just a little bit. So that way things are a little bit less intense. And generally, I think a less reflective object looks better. Even if it's something that's supposed to be really, really reflective, just make sure that it's not perfectly, perfectly reflective because then it just does not look realistic whatsoever.